Prime Minister Netanyahu, thank you so much for joining us. A central part of the ICC's charges against you and Gallant is, quote, starvation of civilians as a method of warfare. Now, I know that Israel repeatedly claims that enough aid is getting in and there is not a purposeful starvation and those claiming otherwise are misinformed are lying. Is Israel going to send a delegation to The Hague to present any evidence to defend itself? I think these charges are exactly as President Biden called them. They're outrageous. They're beyond outrageous. This is a rogue prosecutor that has put false charges and created false symmetries uh, that uh, that are both uh, dangerous uh, and, and false. And uh, the first false symmetry is he equates the democratically elected leaders of uh, Israel with the terrorist tyrants of uh, Hamas. That's like saying that, uh, well, I'm issuing, the, you know, arrest warrants for uh, FDR and Churchill, but also for Hitler. Or I'm uh, issuing uh, arrest warrants for uh, uh, George Bush, uh, George W. Bush, uh, but also for bin Laden. That's absurd. Secondly, the charges are completely false. Let's take this charge of uh, starvation. We've put in 500,000 tons of trucks, of uh, food and uh, medicine uh, for this uh, population. We've taken 20,000 trucks. We've paved roads to put those trucks in. We've uh, opened border crossings that uh, Hamas closed down. I've had airdrops that have facilitated sea route supplies. I mean, the whole thing is absurd. You should know this. I mean, uh, the prices of food in Gaza has dropped by 80 percent. The markets don't lie. Uh, they talk about 23, I think, or 30 cases of malnutrition, a population of 2 million. OK. The United States in 2022 had 20,000 mm -hmm. deaths of malnutrition. That's three times more than in Gaza. This is completely false. It's the kind of slander that has been leveled at the Jewish people for ages. And it's renewed now against the Jewish state. It was false then. It's false now. But one thing. This prosecutor, this rogue prosecutor, mm -hmm. didn't even bother to come here. He said he'd come here to check the facts. He didn't check the facts. He just went out and demonized the Jewish state, and he's taking the ICC down the route of the General Assembly that passes infinite resolutions, flat-earth resolutions against Israel, or the Human Rights Council that used to have a reputation that is completely blown because half the resolutions are against right. Israel, not against Iran, not against North Korea, not against Syria. It's the same thing. It's... Uh, Outrageous. So, and false. Uh, and should, dangerous because it endangers every democracy. We should note, though, it, it's not just the ICC expressing concerns about the lack of humanitarian aid getting into Gaza. President Biden and his administration and their officials, not to mention European allies of Israel and their officials, they've all been making this case for months that Israel is not letting enough aid in. So, when President Biden expresses concern about you not letting enough aid in, is he wrong? Well, no, we had the same concerns. We were trying to get the aid in. We got the aid in, and Hamas was looting the aid. That's what was happening. Uh, they were taking it for themselves uh, or extorting the population. Uh, we were letting the aid in from the start. And look, I've been, this was my directive from day one. The day one thing was we have to provide, we comport with international law. We comport with the rules of war. We have to get those trucks in. We're getting hundreds of trucks every day in. And that's, uh, that's been uh, an aspect of our uh, conducting conduct of war because we try to get civilians out of harm's way. We've done things that no country, no army has done in history. It's not me saying that. It's General Petraeus saying that. Uh, the uh, head of the uh, urban warfare at West Point, Colonel John Spencer, says it. Israel has gone out of its way both in humanitarian aid and getting civilians out of harm's way with millions of text messages, uh, millions of phone calls uh, and leaflets that we've been dropping, giving up the element of surprise. Israel is given here a bum rap. It's, uh, I think it's dangerous because basically it's the first democracy that is uh, uh, being taken to the dock when it is doing exactly what democracy mm -hmm. should be doing in an exemplary way, I think it will endanger all other democracies. Israel may be first. You're next. Britain is next. Others are next, too. And the second thing that is dangerous about this, Jake, is I think this fans the fires of anti-Semitism that are raging on American campuses and throughout Western capitals. They're pouring gas. He just poured gasoline on it, this mm -hmm. uh, rogue prosecutor, Khan. So because... You know, people initially will think this is serious. They think the ICC, this is a serious thing. It's not. Well, it's a travesty of justice, and it's a pack of lies. After seven months of unity for your wartime government, there seems a lot of disagreement now about your plans for Gaza or lack thereof 
after a major military operation in Gaza is over. Benny Gantz uh, wants a plan, or he says he's going to leave your government. Your defense minister, Yoav Gallant, says you don't have a plan. He's basically accusing you of trying to lay the groundwork for an occupation, either civilian or military, in Gaza in the future. Are you denying that the plan is for an occupation of Gaza, or are you taking it off the table? No, I have a, I have a very clear plan. I, I think the first thing, the, the day after Hamas, uh, Jake, is the day after Hamas. We have to get rid of Hamas, otherwise there's no future for Gaza, no future for peace, and it'll be a tremendous victory for not only for Hamas, but for the Iran terror axis that backs it and organizes Hezbollah, the Houthis, and all these other sundry terrorist organizations. Uh, so I think we have to defeat Hamas, and we will defeat Hamas. Ha uh, Rafah is the last stronghold of uh, Hamas uh, terrorist battalions. We'll defeat them. That ends the, uh, the intense part of the fighting. But once Hamas is defeated, what we have to do is have sustained demilitarization of Gaza. And yes, on this, I think the only force that can prevent the resurgence of terrorism uh, for, the, for the foreseeable future is Israel. At the same time, we want, I want, a civilian administration that is run by Gazans who are neither Hamas nor committed to our so destruction. So you're taking it off the and table. the third thing that we need to do is, no, I'm not. I'm putting it on the table, on the contrary. No, you're, that's not I'm, I'm saying you're taking fact, off a, a, an Israeli occupation of Gaza, of Gaza. You're taking off the table an Israeli if occupation. You mean, if you mean resettling... If you mean resettling Gaza, I'm, yeah, it was never in the cards, and I said so openly, and some of my constituents are not happy about it, but that's my position. The third thing that I would, uh, uh, I would do is uh, uh, have a reconstruction of Gaza, uh, if possible, done by uh, the moderate Arab states and uh, the international community. That's demilitarization, civilian administration by local Gazans who are not committed to Israel's destruction, and... Mm -hmm. uh, responsible reconstruction. That, I think, is a realistic plan, and I've said so. Look, if some people are not happy with it, maybe they want to uh, put in the Palestinian uh, Authority that is, uh, still teaches its children to uh, uh, you know, uh, seek the destruction of Israel, pays uh, terrorists. The more terrorists, the more Jews they kill, the more they pay. Uh, supports terrorism. That's not my position. I want a different future for Israelis and Palestinians alike.